We ask people to uh, do uh, uh, float plans. I just have a plan of who's on the boat, you know, how many, where you're intending on going and when you intend to be back. Because if something goes wrong, we want to be there as quickly as we can. In Southern Oregon, we're very lucky to have such immediate access to the incredibly beautiful outdoors. You don't have to travel very far to enjoy nearby forests, lakes, rivers, and more. However, with the easy accessibility of our beautiful environment, it's easy to forget that staying safe is very important. Fortunately, we have people that look out for us, including the Marine Patrol and Search and Rescue teams. Let's learn a bit more about these invaluable resources. Hi, my name is Kayla Wade with Jackson County Close-Up, and I'm here with Sergeant Sean Richards from the Jackson County Sheriff's Department to talk about the county's Marine Patrol team. Sergeant Richards, thanks for being here today. It's my pleasure. So a lot of citizens might not know that we have a Marine Patrol. Can you tell us a little bit about it? We have a, actually a very, uh, very good Marine Patrol unit here. We have been longtime uh, contract partners with the Oregon State Marine Board to bring marine enforcement to Jackson County. Obviously, we have lots of uh, the, the world famous Rogue River, as well as lakes and the creeks and everything in between. So it makes sense that we have somebody out there keeping everybody safe and uh, you know making sure that people are, are doing the right thing out there. And uh, we have a, a pretty diverse program, you know, between non-powered boats and powered boats alike. And what does the Marine Patrol do in case of an emergency? Yeah, the biggest thing is to be out on the water. You know, we, we do uh, yearly checks on everybody's boat to make sure they, they have the proper safety equipment. Because again, safety is our number one concern. And then as well, they just be out there on the water. So when there is an emergency, uh, we're hopefully close and we can react to it and help as quickly as possible. And can you tell us a little bit about the technology that the Marine Patrol uses? We have both a non-power program and a power program. So, you know, on the river we use both. So uh, you might spend one day in a raft going down the river, um, working with the rafters, and the next day you may be in a jet boat, you know, working in a different section of the river where, where people use jet boats to fish and uh, recreate in other ways. Do you have any safety tips for citizens that yeah. you want to make sure they know? Absolutely. You know, the number one thing is just take that extra time when you go out in the springtime before you go out for the summer. Make sure all your proper safety equipment is on board your boat and accessible. Make sure it's still good because things do degrade from year to year. And then the number one thing that I just try to convince people to do is wear a life jacket. You know, one of the downsides to being a Marine deputy is uh, the tragic end where somebody loses their life by drowning or a boat accident. And you know, a life jacket is just a really easy way to m mitigate most of that risk. Is there anything else that you would want uh, the citizens, our community to know about the Marine Patrol? Yeah, you know, another thing we do is we ask people to uh, do uh, uh, float plans, you know, or a boating plan. So basically whoever's gonna call me at midnight and say that, hey, my family didn't show up, they were going to, you know, Applegate Lake boating, that they have the basic information that's gonna help us get to them as quickly as possible. Because boats do break down, you know, they're mechanical or, or other problems. And uh, so we just wanna make sure we can get to you as quickly as possible so you don't have to spend that miserable night out floating around in the cold. 